Alright guys, how are you all doing? I'm Fiesta here and today we have Intel Core i9-3980HX laptop processor scores around 30k points in Cinebench R23. EVGA overclock team their takes their first spot in 3 Mark ranking with RTX 4090 prototype which is also the farewell of their GPU making. Nvidia GeForce RTX 4090 and 4080 laptop pre-orders are starting soon. Some AMD board partners have not released their RX 7900 GPUs yet so we still need to get yet to get these GPUs interesting and lastly we have Intel Core i9 3900k half which probably the most the I should say the best CPU for overclocking according to the Raptor Lake binning report so firstly we have Gerard Stack just uh, uh, did some Benchmark for the MSI Raider GE7HHX, which is the latest model of 2023, and which also uh, features the Intel Core i9 3980HX. And as you can see in Cinebench R23, this is the benchmark that he did, is getting like in single core around 2135, and in multi core, it's getting 30,498, which is the reaching the 30,000 mark, which is great beating literally the predecessors of 12950HX and uh, well as you can see it's all, all, all the other ones cannot even reach the multi-core level of even 2500 so that's pretty good for a laptop CPU right here obviously it's got to be very much expensive as a laptop but still it's doing pretty good as a 24 core part 30,000 points in Cinebench R23 is looking very good I wonder what AMD has to offer in this competition Next up we have Bissau Bissau, or I should say, at Bum Photo 1. He's uh, basically a part-time overclocker and basically he is uh, saying that this is our last dance and sorry to let you censoring a lot of f words. Well, basically thanking Gamers Nexus, which basically Gamers Nexus, uh, well, did uh, basically a blog about the uh, EVGS uh, how they made their last GPU, that prototype one, the RTX 4090. Which again, it hasn't got released because it was a prototype and well, we all already know what happened with EVGA and NVIDIA. They took, uh, well, the partnership went off. So that's kind of sad. And well, this is the farewell for the EVGA to not make any like GPUs anymore. That's kind of really sad. But yeah, what else we can do, right? Next up, we have at home published this article here, and we have RTX 4090 slash 480 gaming notebooks. Basically, will be first to go on on the market. Basically, for the pre-orders, if you want to do it, and it's gonna be on February 1, basically. And this is the well, RTX 4090 is not quite the RTX 4090 desktop. We already know that because it's a well a notebook one, but still, I mean, uh, RTX 4090 and 4080 gaming notebooks are coming soon, and now you can pre-order them. But I still would hold it because reviews comes first than buying. So I guess uh, if you want to pre-order, do it at your own risk. And it is going to be available in February 1 for pre-orders only. Next up, we have video cards reporting this that some AMD board partners like Vaster Moore and Dataland haven't uh, released their RX 7900 GPUs yet. So that's very interesting. If you look into the uh, well, Dataland GPUs here, that's the Dataland GPU. It looks very interesting. Like, it's not bad. It's, it's just basically basically their reference design. But this is the their custom model, which is the 6700 XT that launched previously, and probably they're gonna stick with this design. I'm not sure, but maybe. But yeah, basically this is the custom model for the previous gen RX 6750 XT so yeah they haven't released the 7900 and 7900 XT X so I wonder when they will launch it and this is the Vastermore Radeon RX 6750 XT alloy which again looks very much neat going with a red accent so not bad but they haven't released it yet for some reason I don't know what's going on but maybe uh, they will at some point but yeah I have to I guess we have to wait. Next up, we have Tom's Hardware reporting uh, Igor Slab's report here. Basically, the uh, this is a report from the Binning Stats Reveal, or Binning Stats, I should say. And, well, if you look into some stats reports here, right here, if you go into the top, this is the, well, first of all, if you I have to mention this, the, the uh, SP stands for Silicon Prediction, which, uh, again, is a feature that comes with the ROG Strix boards, the maximums and the Strix boards that kind of calculates the formula to like assess silicon quality 
And well, if you look into some graphs here or the charts here, the Core i9 3900K and the 3900KF, if you look into it, they're the, uh, in terms of average silicon production rate, they're pretty close and they're doing really good compared to the i7. And again, this is the overclocking rate, so obviously it, it seems like the i9 models are doing pretty well, specifically the 3900KF model. In the median SP, 3900K apps getting 102 compared to the 3900K getting 99. And the best silicon production got 111 for the 3900K F and the 3900K is getting the highest, which is the 114. And also the worst got, well, obviously it also got the worst, uh, 3900K F 91 because it was tested more times, 164 times. So yeah, basically... Uh, it does show that the rating in average, on average, if you look into it, the 3900K F is looking the best for overclocking enthusiasts because it has the better overclocking yield rate, I guess. And, well, if, in terms of i7 models, they're qu quite lower. Uh, the i5 model is terrible in, in terms of overclocking for some reason. But I don't know why, but yeah, it's just not that good enough. But yeah, this report just tells you that the i9 3900K F is probably the best in terms of overclocking. So... Yeah, well done. All right, that is it for today. What do you think about the, well, the Core i9 3900K F? Do you think it's a good value? In terms of pricing, it should be. I mean, it's giving you the better overclocking rate. So I guess you can buy it. And I mean, it's cheaper than the 3900K. And also you can overclock it and, and get better performance. So I, I mean, it's a good deal, I believe. So yeah, like, share and subscribe. And I'll be ending here. So yeah, have a good day.